God is breaking out all over this world. And you know what? He wants to break out in your life today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney and Amanda. Welcome to Hope Today. We've got a great program for you. Hey, God is doing some amazing things. Amanda, tell us what's coming up. That's right. Well, we have an awesome guest with us. Her name is Chrissy Nelson and her book is Say Goodbye to What Holds You Back. And let me just give you a tidbit of, of what you're about to hear. We're going to identify walls that keep you you know, feeling as though you are not enough or feeling full of fear, overwhelmed or stuck. You're going to rediscover your joy in Jesus so you can believe what God says about you. You're going to gain some tools for the journey to see those walls shatter to the ground and you are going to move from daily survival to daily revival through Jesus. You aren't going to want to miss this interview. You're going to want to get this book too, but call someone up, encourage them to tune in because it's an encouraging message Chrissy's going to bring to us. Well, Amanda, I like what you just said from going from daily survival to daily revival because that's what God is truly doing in this season. I know so many people are sharing on social media about Asbury Revival. There's breaking out in Lee University and also um, I'm thinking, where's in Ohio? Cedar 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 there's just yeah. like all in Sanford and just hearing all these different mm -hmm. reports, hearing what's going on. But the one thing that God in this season has just really just been speaking to my heart, it's happening. Yes. We're no longer, it's like we're crying out for revival. It's here. Yes. We're in a move of God. Just sit and think about that for a moment. And one thing I think it is so important is that we just open up ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. However you want to move, whatever you want to do, let us get out the way. And I had an incredible weekend. I was at uh, Covenant Church of, Church of Pittsburgh at a women's conference called Emerge. And let me tell you, Tom and Amanda, the presence of God filled the room. The glory of God, like you could not get up off the floor. There was signs, wonders, and miracles. I mean, women who couldn't see, like eyes were like healed on the spot. They had shoulder injuries. Like, I mean, there was a woman in a, like had a cane, couldn't like walk and got up walking and started dancing. I mean, just seeing that and being in an atmosphere of miracles. This is our identity in Christ mm -hmm. is that he Very did nice. it. So we're able to receive it. So I just encourage you today. I know there's a lot we see what's everything that's going on, but we just declare and decree today. It's coming to your house. It's coming to your Thank family. You. God is on the move and just receive it and say, God, what do you want to do with me today? Because I love mm -hmm. this conversation we're going to have with Chrissy, because when we know our identity in Christ, when we know our inheritance, we are his kids. This is what he wants to do That's is right. lavish his love and his glory upon yeah. us. And so we need to be ready for it today. Amen. Amen. I feel like the glory just dropped in right here, right now. And that's great. You know, I, I'm thinking of all these things that are happening. The Jesus Revolution movie is coming out this week. And I, I, I posted on my Facebook, and you can look it up, uh, Kelsey Grammer, who plays Chuck Smith, talking with uh, on uh, Kelly and Ryan, talking about it. And he broke down. And, and it, was, it was a powerful moment. You should look it up on YouTube. Uh, just a, a, a powerful moment about... Uh, God is doing something. In fact, we've got a couple letters here from some of our viewers. Just want to take a moment. We love when you write in. We love when we hear from you. Uh, this is Carla. She said, thank you for Cornerstone TV and your prayer line. It's great to know that I can call in anytime and receive prayer. For reasons beyond my comprehension, I've been unemployed quite a bit in recent years. I'm thankful for your caring people who pray with me. I'm also very thankful for hard questions. Yay, hard questions. I just love that show. God uses it to answer questions that I have, although I've never called in myself. Thank you so much, Carla. And then we also have Patricia. She wrote in to us and she said, Dear Cornerstone, thank you so much for all the literature that you send so quickly. I am so thankful for Dr. Jeffress's book. He is a the, one of the programs I watch every morning, he is at the top of my list of preachers. I love watching them all. I'm very glad to be a partner, to know I'm helping to have the good news of Jesus. The Lord richly bless you and your ministry and make you continue until he returns. And so we just thank you all for, you know, I know sometimes when we're out and about, you guys come up to us and you say how much you appreciate Cornerstone, but we appreciate you. And if it wasn't for you and if it wasn't for your partnership and giving and supporting this ministry, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you for all of you who support, who pray. Pray for us. We love you. And if you haven't connected with us yet, please give us a call. We'd love to get our newsletter, our Hope Today newsletter in your hand. You can go to ctvn.org or, as I said, give us a call. Well, what if we could see ourselves the way God sees us? After all, we are his children and we were created in his image. The enemy has a different approach, though to make us feel overwhelmed, stuck, full of fear, and believing we are never enough. In Chrissy Nelson's new book, Say Goodbye to What Holds You Back, she provides the keys to tearing down the walls that hinder us from thriving in who God 
created us to be. Chrissy, welcome to Hope Today. Hi, Amanda. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Well, I tell you, in the opening of your book, I was so blessed. Just you wrote a little note to your daughter, and I would just like to read this. It says, to my daughter, Janessa, never second guess who God says you are. Your value is not in what you can do, but in who God made you to be. Move forward, my darling, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus every day of your life. He is worth it all. Talk to us why, you know, what was God speaking to you when you wrote that? You know, it was almost, it was for her, it was for the, the next generation, but it was also like reflective on, on my own journey because she's the age that I was when I started to question my own identity. Who am I, God? What is my value? What is my worth? Does my life really matter? Who do you say I am? So it was like I was writing to 12-year-old me um, as well as, of course, writing to my daughter so that she can carry on. But what if a generation could capture now who they are in Jesus? What will our world look like if this next generation can have that now in middle school, in high school, and be moving forward with their life, with the fire of God, with eyes blazing forward, fixed on Jesus, knowing who they are? What could our world look like? And so that was on my heart when I was writing that, just sort of almost prophetically declaring that over that generation. Yes, amen. And we receive it. Receive those words today, even for yourself. And I think it's so powerful, Chrissy, to release those words over the next generation, to see that, call that out in them. So thank you for that. You know, with each wall, you break down your book with 12 different walls. And I tell you, each one, I, I was like, yep, I'm there. I have been in that place. I have heard that lie. But you say those walls are lies. And if we believe them, we're in big trouble. Talk to us about that. Yeah, you know, the enemy wants to bombard us, plain and simple. He wants to bombard our minds with lies to keep us stuck, to keep us full of fear, to keep us feeling like we're not enough, you know, we're inadequate, and to overwhelm us. But God wants us, the daughters of God, the children of the living God, to be released in our identity of who he says we are, not bound and held back by these walls, but running forward in our call. So how do we do that? And how do we get there? Well, that's what I aim to address in this book by shining a spotlight, a big bright light on the lies of the enemy so that they're exposed, so that we can address those areas in our life and say, no more, I'm done. Jesus, help me, help me to see these walls shatter. You know, it's his power. It's not by might, but it's by the spirit, you know, says the Lord. It's by his power that these walls shatter to the ground. It's just powerful. I'm captivated just hearing you say that because I want it for people. But I love how you broke it down. Like you talk about the walls, you identify the lie, a trap, and then the truth that knocks down the walls. Can you give us an example? Whichever of the 12, they're all really good. Y'all just have to get this book. <laughs> yes, thank you. Forgive me. I have to plug in my computer so I don't lose you guys. I apologize. Okay, no problem. Well, I was, I'm going to read through the 12 while we're just waiting here for a moment because I think people will identify with them. But one is, I'll never be good enough. There's something wrong with me. Someone else can do it better. I mean, I have said that to myself more than once. I'm so afraid, but I might fail. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. <laughs> yes, I don't like confrontation. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm not good at saying no. I'm all alone. I'm stuck. But I'm not perfect. If you don't mull over every detail, something will get missed. And then you're up all night for nothing. So those are the 12. But I'm telling you, God uses the wisdom mm -hmm. from Chrissy and her father. She shared with us. He's a psychologist. He has wisdom in this book. It's really going to help you to overcome. All right. Are we good now, Chrissy? Yeah, okay. we're good. We're good. Okay. You know, and that, that glitch segues perfectly into the, top, the, the one topic I wanted to laser in on, and that is that feeling of, 
of inadequacy, right? When we feel like we're not enough or we've, you know, messed things up or surely God can't use me, you know, because we're so aware of our own, you know, humanity, our own normalness, <laughs> if I could just kind of coin that as a thing. Um, so in the first chapter of my book, is it's titled, I'm Not Enough. And that's a wall that the enemy wants to keep us stuck behind. And um, the mindset is, you know, that I'm I'm just too inadequate. I lack. I I'm limited. But the Bible says, you know, Jesus said to Paul, "My grace is sufficient for you." Right? And we could stop right there. My grace. God says, "My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness." You know, there's something about our inadequacy that's part of the equation. There's something a part of uh, there's something part of me having areas where I lack and I'm limited that God says, no, this is actually part of my design for you. Why? Why would God design us to have areas in our life where we're insufficient? Well, you know, I'd like to chime in on that because his design is not for us to be sufficient in and of ourselves. It's for us to only be fully sufficient in and through him, you know, in him, we live and we move and we have our being. And so the point of exposing this, this mindset of I'm not enough is it's twofold. Number one, it's to identify that we're partnering with that. And number two, it's to sort of reframe it, not to even try to go against that, but to go, wait a second, I, you're actually, I'm not enough, but I'm not meant to be, I'm not meant to be fully sufficient in and of my own strength. If I were, I wouldn't need the Lord. And I'm telling you, that has helped me so much in the things that God has called me to do in being a mom, in being an author, in, you know, branching out into ministry in the various ways that I have where I'm going, God, I'm not enough for this. I lack, I'm insufficient. I can't do this. And God would go, wait a second, Chrissy, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace, Chrissy, catch this. My grace, his grace is sufficient for us. We are meant to be totally dependent on God and to be totally aware every single day of our need for him, not our need to grow in our own knowledge and in our own, you know, strength and power. No, but to fall at his feet and go, Jesus, I need you fill me up so that I can move forward, not be stuck, not be overwhelmed, not be held back, right? Not, not bowing to this, this negative feeling of being not enough, but rather seeing that as a positive, because that reminds me every day of my need for Jesus. And what a gift, right? Because when we partner with him, the Bible says that nothing is impossible. Paul said this, therefore I will boast, I'll boast all the more gladly in my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. We want to see revival in our, in our cities, in our schools, in our workplaces. Partner with this verse. Stop uh, agreeing with the lie that makes you feel inadequate to where you're going to hide behind the wall, but rather embrace that and go, that's right. I'm not enough in and of my own strength and praise the Lord for that because now Christ's power can rest on me and move and operate through me. And that's part, that's a convergence of my own story and also hopefully an encouraging word to others that are listening that you can sort of turn that from being a negative and see it as the positive, that, that little milestone beacon along the way that causes you to lean on Jesus in all that you do. Chrissy, that is so good and so freeing and, and, and so life changing when we uh, grasp that. And I recognize myself in everything that Amanda read, all 12 of those at times. One thing that you mentioned, and I know that I've struggled with this whole idea, you don't say the word perfectionism, but it's kind of like, I've got to look at every detail. I've got to have every, all my ducks in a row or I can't move forward. And we're paralyzed by that. Could you just speak to that, that wall? Absolutely. You know, we think we need to have it all polished up before we can move forward, right? I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, I always do this because I'm the first one to raise my hand. If we're honest with ourselves, so often we are paralyzed before we take a step because we think we need to have it all together. But God says, no. He says, you don't need to have anything together aside from your yes your simple obedient, your, your heart just bowed before me going, I will move when you tell me to move God. And, and, and we're, because we're human, we're never going to have it all together. We're never going to have things perfected. He's the perfect one. 
we're the imperfect ones. And the, but the, the beautiful thing is when we partner with him, we see that, that perfect, you know, power of God going out from our lives and it shines the spotlight on him, right? Because I'm imperfect, but yet I'm doing the impossible, whatever the impossible is in your life, you know, insert that because of that, God is given glory through our lives. You know, people pay attention and they go, you're so normal. How are you doing A, B, C, or D? You know, you're just like me. How is this happening in your life? And, and we say, because I stopped trying to figure it out before I'd take a step and decided just to take the step, even in my own imperfections, right? Because I love we're talking about these invisible walls that we don't even know at times that paralyze us from walking into the full manifestation of who we are called to be in Christ. And I just want to ask you, what are some practical steps? Somebody's listening right now. They're like, I'm identifying with all of this. It's perfectionism or not feeling good enough or just really struggling with certain things. What can they do today to take that first step to start seeing those walls come falling down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say get in the word of God. You know, the word of God is both divine and practical. It's our guidebook through life. We see Jesus modeling perfectly the practical application of the instruction of God. And so when we get into the word of God and we, you know, digest it and we, and we have it in our hearts, the Bible says that it's alive and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. And that word in our lives begins to cut through the noise and the chaos. And so the practical aspect of that is that you begin to repeat what you're reading, get into these scriptures. And I list a lot of the scriptures in my book. And at the end of each chapter, there's a section called believe what God says about you. And I take you through these practical ways that you can declare what Jesus is saying. You can read a scripture over your life and you can then, you know, pray that out. And so Repetition is the key to learning, right? And so as we repeat the, the, the truth over our lives, then we begin to believe more and more what God is saying about us. So I, I mean, that's what I do. And that's what's practical in my life is repeating what the Bible says that counters the lie. And then I just sort of rest in that truth. And I go, God, you are who you say you are, right? And so... I'm just going to rest in this truth and I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to you to work that out in my journey. And he does because he's good and he's sovereign and he's our father. Amen. This is such just good words. Thank you for writing this book. But I was thinking about you share about your struggle, even with the battle of the mind while you were trying to write this book yeah. and how the lies were bombarding you. And yes. you heard the voice of the Lord through Marilyn Hickey. I love this. Can you tell our viewers? Yeah. I mean, case in point, when I was writing my first book, you know, I'm this little mama, you know, I have two little kids and I, God had called me to write when I was 17. And then he told me, okay, the time is now when I'm this mom of two small children. So, um, I took one little step, one little step, then I end up getting, you know, a book deal with a publisher and I'm going, thank you, Jesus. So as I'm writing this book, I'm very aware of just how normal I am, yet writing a book felt like something super big. Um, and so I would cry out to God, you know, why God, why me? Why not somebody with, you know, way more influence? And how am I going to do this, God? And one morning as I was up really early to write. I've had my coffee in hand and I'm walking to my couch and suddenly I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me and he reminded me of something that I had heard Marilyn Hickey share in a, in a conference one time. I sat there and she spoke these words and it was as though the spotlight was on me and my heart and they were just for me and the Holy Spirit spoke them into my ear again and reminded me and he said, Chrissy, God thinks you can do anything. <laughs> and I went, whoa. And how true is that? And friend, God looks at you and he says that of you. I think you can do anything. Why? Because it's his spirit in us that empowers us for the impossible in our life. It's his power and his spirit. Of course, nothing is impossible with us because he is perfected in those areas that we're so focused on and call limitations, weakness, and lack. But that's actually the void, the room for the power and the presence of God to to execute the impossible in you. God thinks you can do anything. 
Wow, I just love those words. Thank you, Lord. Would you mind just taking a moment and praying over all of us, our viewers here in the studio, because we yeah. want God to do the impossible through all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Father, I thank you for who you are and that you want to partner with everyday people to do the impossible. Lord, that you want these walls to shatter in our lives even more than we do, God. I thank you that you are moving and that your hand is on our lives. Lord, I ask right now, wherever the viewer is at, that they would feel your presence all around them, that you would wrap your arms of strength and of love around them, that they would hear you speaking into their ear, reminding them of who you say that they are and what you say they can do. Lord, let faith arise in my brothers and sisters today. Let hope arise. Let dead dreams come back to life today. Those dreams that you have spoken into them in years past, we call those to awake in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Chrissy, so much for being with us here on Hope Today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's a joy. Awesome. Well, make sure you get your copy of Chrissy's book. It is a great read and it's impactful for your life. When we come back, we're going to unpack that powerful scripture that Chrissy talked about. And it ties in perfectly with today's discussion and share how you can apply it to your walk with the Lord. We'll be right back. Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. You have got to go to our YouTube channel. There is so much stuff on there. I mean, I'd like, it. I'd like to get to 100,000 really quick, but you know, the most important thing is that you are one of those 100,000 that are being blessed by all the ministry of Cornerstone. Well, we're gonna be blessed by a verse, and it was Chrissy, she said it was her life's verse, and uh, it's such an important verse, and this is it in the uh, English Standard Version, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. <laughs> Guys, I, 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 it's not, I don't claim this as a life verse, but this has meant a lot to me, this, this thing, because I always have felt inadequate. I've always felt not smart enough, not, not bright enough, not not verbose enough to do this job or anything I've been called to do by the Lord, but he puts us where he can use our weaknesses to show forth his strength, Sydney. You know, just even looking at this verse, I think one thing that I'm just like reminded of is just how important it is to just like be our complete humility is just laying it all down because I think a lot of times, I think for, sometimes it might be the opposite. I know, Tom, you said, do you feel that, like, sometimes inadequate? And I think a yeah. lot of times for people, they feel like they're good enough and they got it all together. But I think in this verse, like, just what speaks to me is just sometimes I have to lay it all down and be like, Jesus, I'm nothing without you. Yeah. I have to surrender and lay my life down and knowing that, because he says, you know, he like, he loves a broken and a contrite spirit and just coming before the Lord and having reverence and a fear of the Lord. 
I think that's something that's missing in our culture today, Amanda, is that, you know, so many people, I think, I know it's like we love God, but do we fear the Lord? Do we lay down our lives mm -hmm. for him and understand that his is the king of kings? This is that's the Lord right. of lords. I know in our culture, we don't have a king, but in other cultures, you just can't go to the king and just act any kind of way. There has to be a reverence. And so if we yeah. see Jesus in that way, that yes, he's our, he's our savior, he's our mm -hmm. friend, but he is the king of kings. Mm -hmm. And I come down and I reverence him because when I do, there's a transfer that happens upon me. That's right. And, you know, no matter what you could be walking through, there were moments, you know, you have times where you feel like you think everything's all together. We need Jesus just as much in those moments as you do. But really when, you know, our family, we just, things were falling apart. I, my kids were turning from the Lord and I found myself in a very broken place. And, you know, the enemy tried to silence me. And I would feel like, you know, coming on here to do TV, like, what am I doing? I don't deserve to sit in that seat because of what was happening. It was like I was letting what's around me define me instead of my Heavenly Father and how quickly that can happen. And maybe that's you today, that you've allowed the circumstances that have happened to you or choices that you made and that's what's defining you. I can tell you right now, do what Chrissy did and sit with the Lord, get in his word because he's gonna tell you about who you are and he's gonna tell you how what he did has completed you if you will receive that. I encourage you receive the gift of salvation today if you haven't already. Maybe you've been walking with the Lord. Ask him to fill you once again with his Holy Spirit because he desires to do something amazing in and through your life and all the excuses that you can come up with. I know I've had a million myself, but God says, my eyes on you and you can do anything. There is nothing with God involved that you cannot do. Step out in faith. That is such a good word, Amanda. And you know what, don't have, uh, I like what Sydney said, because don't have the pride of the worm either. Like, I can't do this. Like, don't have the pride that says I can do this and I don't need God, or you wouldn't probably say that, but you might function that way. But don't have that, that pride that says, oh, I'm just, a, I'm just a little old me. I can't do this. No, don't have that either. You know, um, when, you, when you're in the presence of royalty, you mentioned about being with the, uh, in, in the presence of the king. You're not allowed to turn your back when you walk out. You back up, they back up like this because you don't turn your back on royalty. Don't turn your back on God today. Don't turn the other way. God says you are sufficient. God says you are able. God says you are strong enough in him to do that thing. So don't turn away and say, no, I'm not. No, no, don't do that. God's got great and powerful and mighty things for you to do. And he's got the everyday things for you to do too. And he's going to give you the strength and he's going to give you the strength today to do what you need. On tomorrow's Hope Today, prepare for the greatest exodus in Bible prophecy. Author and television host Richard Pearson helps us better understand what's happening in America during these current signs of the times. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.